Well, what we just listened to was just made out of bad sounds. Or to make it more specific, it was made out of more or less 50 different bad sounds. And this is what I want to talk to you about tonight. Um, when I decided to work with bats, I had no idea how those animals interact or communicate with each other. And during the last years for some research projects, I had to listen to bad sounds over and over, like for hours and hours, for days, for weeks, whatever. And one day, when I came back home from a party, so it was probably a Sunday morning, um, I had to go right back to my analysis. <laughs> and at that point, I started thinking, wait, this sounds actually like techno or some noisy music I usually listen to when I go partying. And that was the moment where the idea for this project began. <laughs> but first, let me start with some general information about these beautiful animals, the bats. Bats are the only mammals capable of flying, and without bats, the ecosystem would simply not work. This is because bats can be seed dispersers, pollinators, we have fruit-eating bats, and also insect predators, and even more. So to us, this means that without bats, we wouldn't have stuff like 
coffee, chocolate, mangoes. I mean, those are all things that we all do appreciate, I think. Um, especially tequila, because the agave plant is highly depending on bats. <laughs> However, <laughs> the most astonishing things about bats is that they use sound to see and interact with their physical environment through echolocation. Therefore, they emit calls over the mouth and the nose, which are reflected by their surroundings. Um, and these sounds are usual, usually inaudible to us humans, because the line of frequency ranges between 25 and 120 kilohertz. So on the one hand, bats use the sonar system to, um, to measure the distance to the next object or other surroundings, for example, to locate their prey. And on the other hand, they use it to communicate. And those interspecific communication sounds are called social calls. And I'd like to show you an example of that. So those drop-downs are the social calls, and the ones on the frequency 50 kilohertz, more or less, are the echolocation sounds. So and from these sounds, you can learn a lot about their social behavior. And in fact, bats are highly social animals. Um, not just that they can determine if there's another species around, but they um, also respond to individual names. They form communities, they communicate with their offspring, they point out hunting groups, um, they help each other out while catching insects, and some bats, like the vampire bats, even share their blood prey among themselves. So this language that bats use in their social interaction has particularly impressed me. However, scientific research remains limited in making sense of these sounds. So today we are only able to categorize four different social call types. Firstly, aggression and threat. Secondly, de-stress calls, for example, by being caught, like this one over here. Oh. <laughs> Thirdly, uh, isolation calls, for example, when an infant is isolated from its mother. And fourthly, we have advertisement calls, for example, mating calls. And I'd like to show you an example of that as well. So, because I really like those song-like things they do. <laughs> Yeah, yet I remain hopeful that one day we'll be able to understand whole conversation between those creatures. And of course, to record those calls, we need um, different devices. So we use ultrasonic detectors. Those are small boxes um, with microphones which align ultrasonic waves. Um, with those boxes, we can record the calls of the bats, but then we still have to analyze them through a computer program which converts um, the sounds to an audible frequency. And this works usually through the mix mixer principle. So in this process, a proportional input signal, output signal becomes the input signal. And even with this high technical equipment, the constant and high frequency parts get lost. But why am I telling you all this right now? What I want to illustrate is the interrelation between the human and the non-human and make points of contact between human and animal shared living spaces. So I want to make the invisible visible again. And I do that by picking up those converted calls. And sometimes I use them in their non-edit form. Other times I like to play around with them and make them more abstract. Um, and from this material then I develop my tunes for my performance bad sounds and beats. And by working with noise, I want to depict music, and this is what it is. It's music. So through analyzing those sounds that bats make, one can notice a rhythm, a tag, or melodies, just like the ones in regular songs that our ears are used to. So basically, we can say bats are creatures which produce arts just as we humans do. And we can learn from them and see that we have common ways of functioning and interacting and, I mean, we can take this even further. Let's take climate change as an example. Changes in climate affect not only humans, but also animals. And animals experience such environmental changes differently than we do. So, that's why I think it's important to make ecology a part of the art world, to point those different experiences out. And, well, as I said, human perception is limited. So, let's get away from all this human-centristic view of things and let's start being part of an interactive ecosystem. Thank you.